So back in 3.1, we had taken a look at some of these questions we were asking about markets throughout the unit. Like how do we define the type of market? And we discussed back in 3.1 that we do that by talking about the number of suppliers within that market. But as we go today, we wanna to look a little bit closer at this second question. How do businesses make decisions within those markets? And so we th when we think about how businesses make decisions or really what drives their decisions, if we really think about it, it's that businesses wanna earn as much profit as possible. And we're gonna be talking about some of the numbers behind that as we go today. But let's think back all the way back to unit one and talking about firms and making their decisions. They all have to ask themselves three questions about production and the use of their resources. Remember, we talked about what are we gonna produce, how are we gonna produce, and for whom are we going to produce? And just in the same way that all societies have to ask themselves these three questions, so do businesses. But what we, have to, what we are going to produce is more of just a question of what type of industry are we going to be in? And that's really left up to the business. The for whom, as we talked about back in unit two, is decided upon within the market through supply and demand. But we're going to talk about that second question, how to produce. And we determine the how through something known as the production function. And so I think a function is an idea that we have seen before, especially when it comes to math. And so let's talk about a function as it relates to math. You guys have probably seen something along the lines of this, y equals f of x. Well, what exactly does that mean? Well, on the right side here, we have our input, and then on the left side, y, we have our output. Well, really what we're saying is y is equal to some function of x. So we plug in some x into a function and out spits our y, our output. Something very similar happens as we're talking about this in terms of production, except our function in this case, or our equation in this case, looks something like this. Now before you get overwhelmed, I think this is fairly intuitive. So again, on the right side, we have a function, but this time instead of a function of, of x, we have a function of the letters L and the letters K. And really, L and K are just our inputs in production, our two major inputs, labor and capital. It's kind of weird, but in economics, we use K for capital since we use the letter C for a number of other things, specifically costs. So we use K for capital. So these are our inputs in production. We have our workers and we have our machinery and we have some sort of combination of those. We plug those things into some function and outspits our output or the Q. And the Q stands for our quantity. So our output, we say, or the quantity that we make is just equal to some function of our labor and capital, some sort of combination of labor and capital. When we put those together and plug them into some function, spits out some amount of product that we can make. Now, one thing we want to see is that as we're talking about this, production decisions are made within two different time frames. Those two time frames are short run and long run. Now, before we go any further, what I want you to know is that short run and long run are not specified by a certain number of years or minutes or hours or anything like that. It is not a concrete time period, but it's a time period that relates to what is happening with our factors of production. The short run is a time frame in when at least one of those factors of production is fixed. For example, like a factory. There is a short period of time. There is some period of time. We're not saying it's a certain number of days or weeks or months or years, but where my, where my factor of production, that is capital, is fixed. So if I have a factory, that factory is set for some sort of amount of time. If I want to build a whole new factory, I can't do that immediately or even overnight. It's going to take time. So in a short amount of time, we say that at least one of those resources is fixed. And we're going to say that it's our capital that it's fixed because capital is a little harder to acquire. It takes some time. Like it takes some time to build a new factory or buy all new machinery or restructure our business. Now the long run is a time frame in which all of the factors of production are variable. All of them change. Over a longer period of time, yeah, we can build a new factory. Over a long period of time, yeah, we can buy all new machinery. So our capital can change. And so what we want to see is that these again are not specific time periods. It's based on are our factors of production fixed or are they variable? Now in the short run, what we're going to end up seeing is it's not that both of them are fixed. Okay, so we have our output and then we have our labor and we have our capital. However, what we see in a short period of time, our labor is variable. Like if I wanted to hire a new worker for my business, I could do that pretty well immediately. 
If I wanted to call someone else into work, I could do that pretty well immediately. Like I can change the labor very quickly, even in the short run. But we said that it's our capital in the short run that's fixed. So remember, in the short run, at least one of these variables is fixed. It's a, it's a constant. Now in the long run, we say everything becomes a variable. So our labor and our capital can change over time. All of the inputs are variable in the long run.